So we are back with uh, another set, another tutorial uh, to model of the fork, right? The fork. So as you can see now, what I have here is a completed, uh, I mean, like nearly completed uh, handle for the fork, all right? So I, if you have followed the tutorial for spoon. Um, the spoon modeling tutorial. I'm sure you got no problem achieving this at this stage, All right? Okay, so now I'm gonna apply uh, symmetry, All right? Apply symmetry. So I get the other half of it. Okay, I'm not gonna apply turbo smooth yet. Uh, I'm gonna go back to our, our editable poly level. And what I'm going to do is uh, to, uh, to tackle on this, on the head of the fork section over here. Alright, but first we need to study, let me just put it into a full screen on the front view. Okay, we need to, I want to talk a bit about how we can, how we should tackle this section over here. As you can see the half quadrant of the object, right, half side of it is like, you have one, two, three. Three, um, we call this, um, three, uh, pointy part of the uh, fork. So, uh, we need to establish the segment, alright, the vertical, enough vertical segment so that we can stop over here and then extrude all the way up, alright, with the enough segment that we're going to prepare. So right now we want one, two, three. At least three vertical segments go all the way down. Alright. So um so now let's start. I'm gonna switch back to the our four view. So on our front view over here, we're gonna go to the, our edge mode. Alright, select the vertical edge and click ring. Alright. Okay, so you select all the way down here, and what we want right now is we want um, three segments. So connect, click on the setting on the connect. Uh, we want three. So click on one. Um, now it's, it's actually three already. By creating two segments. Okay. So now let's go to our. Uh, polygon sub object and extrude on our perspective view here the top side of the polygon we're going to use extrude and manually bring it all the way up until to that extent all right then we're going to end the extrusion task by right clicking on it go vertex sub object mode so i'm going to hold i'm going to put it into transparent alternate x and just move to the side. All right. Because on the side view, select all of the top the pieces and push it back. All right. Okay. Now let's finalize the curvature on the side here. I'm going to use edge mode again, same method again, select the horizon, the vertical edges and use connect, uh, two, three will be enough and start rearranging it on the front view like that and so on and so forth. All right. And don't forget the side view here. Okay, the front view looks okay now. The side view is getting there. Alright, should be like that in the perspective view. You can put the tweak to your own perfection. Alright, it's up to your own uh, modeling taste, modeling feel. Right, you must feel it right then you can perform it better. Alright. So what we have now when we look at the 
one part here. I mean the top part of the polygon here. We will extrude this. But before we extrude, we need to create uh, some sort of framing over here, one by one. Um, just bear with me. So what I'm going to do is uh, select the first one, right? And use the inset, just insert it a bit. Okay, do it for this one, for each individual polygon as well. Right, to, right click on your mouse to exit the inset creation. Now select the newly created polygon there in the middle and bring this up a bit, just slightly up like that. Alright, if you look at the front view, it should be like that. So go to vertex sub object mode and uh, reshape this a bit. I'm going to tweak this a bit, just a bit. Alright. Okay. Right, now just a bit more, a bit over here. All right, perfect. So now we shall use okay. Right now, I'm feeling that my center rotation in the in the perspective viewport is not really centered at. at where I want it to be right now. So what I need to do is uh, just select any part of any any vertex here and press Z right, or the Z key on the keyboard and zoom out a bit. Right. And the center should be around that selected vertices. Alright, remember press the Z key on the uh, keyboard. Okay now let's continue with our modeling operation. Go to polygon sub object. Alright, so we just tackle it one by one, alright? So, I'm um, just going to start with this. There we go. This one. And use uh, extrude or bevel. You can use either both. Uh, but what I want to do now is uh, I might as well just use bevel because it's going smaller towards the end. So I want to be able to scale it at the same time. I'm going to increase the extrusion value, the height. The height of it, and I'm going to make it smaller like that. Um, press OK. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing again. Alright, with um, the other polygon, but we want to move this, you know, align it nicely again. Select on the, the other one. Okay. And bevel it again. Um, press OK. Um, just gonna switch to transparency again and uh, align it nicely like that. All right. So that's how you create a uh, half side of it. Oh, but you notice that because I I mean I I'm beveling the, the surface of the polygon. It's kind of a bit thin on this side. Alright, so it's kind of a bit too thin on this side. So what we need to do is we um, just select the top polygon over here and use the scale and pull it on the y-axis so that we can flatten it out a bit. We can actually do it one shot. All right, three three all together to save time in modeling. All right, so we should get something like that. Apply see the preview it should look like that but I'm sure when you apply on turbo smooth all right it, it will not turn out uh, exactly like that yet okay it won't turn out exactly like that yet because uh you still need, need to put a bit more segment on the horizontal side all right so um just put in turbo smooth all right Put into the smooth, you see this will happen, which we definitely don't want. 
because don't have we don't have enough polygon to maintain that shape to be squarish. So I'm gonna go to edge mode. I'm gonna select the whole vertical row for all three, you know, three, three pointy part of this block. Or can uh, I'm gonna use a uh, connect settings? Okay, connect settings. All right, and I'm gonna use a slider just to slide it right. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, this should be good. I just want to spread this, the bottom row and the top row to be you know all at the edge there. So like that. Slide it. Okay, something like this. Now let's try and see how it looks like in the turbo smooth. And it should look fine. Alright. That should do the job. See, you can go a bit more with the iteration for the turbo smooth to tree to smoothen it up. And of course, there are some subtle tweaks that you can perform over here. Like Like maybe put it in front of it like that. Okay, and of course the last thing is to um, oh yeah, don't forget on the front view. At the bottom, sorry. Um, don't forget at the front view here, since we have extra edges, I mean extra edges and vertices here, we can further uh, re modify. Alright, just like that. If I can, the last steps is. You can switch on the edge mode, select a ring, and just use just do a one right one segment connect on the side that should retain that hard edges like how I did to the spoon before. And press F4 to turn off the wire frame on the shaded view, alter W on the full screen, and voila, that is your. Nice looking fork over there. Alright, so that's how you model the fork. So I hope this has been uh, really beneficial for you. Alright, I hope this video helped you a lot uh, in terms of understanding um, using symmetry and modeling in modeling and also um, how to, you know, the work, how to solve the workaround on how to solve the, the you know, certain types of models like spoon and fork. And hopefully, this can this technique will be uh, you can apply it for to model other things in the future. All right, so I'll see you guys uh, if I make a new tutorial. All right, bye bye.